So, season two, episode two, Big Bucket of Chicken, Kevin McClure looking not so pixelated, Nate doing whatever dance uh, someone that's told that. you to do that's not really good. <laughs> and uh, I, I got a new angle because I want to I want to look like I'm looking at you guys and not – for some reason, I always feel like I'm high on the show because the camera's up here. So I'm always like looking down. So I'm always looking at this chicky eye, like, yeah, man, Nate, you're the funniest, man. That's why you're on the right side of me, bro. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure that's a real stretch for people to think you're high, too. <laughs> I probably thought that anyways. <laughs> yeah, well, just sitting here like, I always right. Yeah, yeah. All right, so uh, yeah, it took a couple weeks off because uh, holidays and because Kevin's a piece of shit. We've established that. Let's be honest, it's more because it was a piece of shit. I mean, well, there was definitely two weeks there where it was definitely because yeah. all days, and there was like a one week and a half maybe where it was like, hey, Kev, want to do a show? And he was like, I got to, I'm busy. Well, I did feel compelled to answer you guys after after someone replying, uh, answer me, cunt face. And I was like, <laughs> I got to do it now. I'm in. Well, though, we texted you like all week. It's like, hey, Kev, so uh, is tonight a good night? No answer, nothing. Call you, don't pick up. It's like, it's like okay. Two days later, it's like, hey man, I was real busy, you know, like sitting around. <laughs> no, it's because I went on like a four day bender, and I like it took me like five days to recover from it. Like New Year's Eve to like Monday was like awful. Like I, I literally like snapped out of the haze on like Thursday morning. I'm like, oh, the things are back. But but that's the thing is like I didn't reply to anybody. Like I got seven voicemails from my mom telling me like you know like Kevin. Clearly, you had a chance to to reply back to your dad. How come you haven't replied back to me? Like, I, like I, the voicemails are awesome. It's great. I'm fine. Sure I didn't leave you a voicemail because I real I, I assumed that Beth Coca would would fill your voice mailbox mailbox with just just like Kevin. Kevin, if you, if you keep this up, black lives do, do matter. And that really makes me mad. Well, I, I like the text message where it just says, "Please call me," like some died or something, and, and it's really nothing like that. Like I thought. Like, I fell out of a tree. Like, that's what I, when I see, please call me. Like, that's what I think of. Uh, but I try to explain to her it's not because I don't want to talk to her. It's just that I just don't talk to you on the phone. I never have and never will. And then I, like, even even you said, you're like, uh, well, maybe you should just answer your, my calls and text sometime. And I said, my mom said this, the exact same thing. And, and you're like, yeah, I know, but uh, your, mom, your mom's calling you so she can give you money. I just want to have fun. <laughs> That's what, the, that's what the text message said. I just want to have fun. That's all I'm doing. It's a fun call for you. I just throw confetti? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Animal balloons? <laughs> no. Nate, anything? Anything? Uh... Did you have to do that to, like, digest that food right there? You see him like a King Kong pound. Yeah. <laughs> fucking digest those cheese that he's eating or whatever he's eating. It's granola. It's you gotta, <laughs> yeah, but you got to wash it down now. Obviously, yeah. you're, you're having trouble getting it down, Lou. <laughs> Although, I think we'd eclipse a thousand hits if you die on the show. We'd finally... We'd finally... You get no hits because neither one of you morons would try to put this on YouTube. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's... Six, yeah, but months, I, but I six months from now, I was like, how do we get the magic from here to here? But I would just use the same recycled footage from the episode that you died only you just dub your voice in. Like Brian could do, like Lou from now on. No one would know the difference. Just a still image of me, just like. All right. And like you're, you get worse and worse. Like there's like a rat eating your face by episode four. You're like, oh, Lou. Hey, that's funny. There's actually a story on MSN that um, a mom in Mexico gave her kid a NyQuil. And she went out clubbing. And when she came home, rats had chewed her baby's face off. So where is she living? Mexico. I mean, that's totally legit. That's... <laughs> Those Mexican rats will get you. Is that racist? No. No. Mexico City is pretty much a, a, a dump. <laughs> Literally a garbage dump with shacks on top of it. I loved when I went to Mexico. They're like, here's the hottest bar in town. And I'm like, 
there's a mud floor, dude. If somebody spills their drink, it's mud. Like there's no, con yeah, there's no concrete. That's why they bury you if you die there. They just take a fucking shovel to the ground. <laughs> Next round's on us, folks. Nothing to see here. Never been to Mexico, but I have been to a bar that didn't have like good. Uh, there's some shitholes on Long Island that have like either plywood floors or worse, plywood floors with sawdust on them to soak up yeah. the booze. Like, hey, everyone spilled their drink. We'll just sprinkle this on there, and then it's like walking on. It's like walking in a sandbox. <clears throat> Oh, I never understood the restaurants like Texas Roadhouse where, like, people just throw peanut shells on the ground. Like, isn't that a little disgusting? It's very like, What is the appeal of that? Well, it's TGI Fridays for America. <laughs> <laughs> There's one here in Deer Park. I never even ate. I haven't eaten there yet because the one time I actually tried to go in there, it was gross and packed, and it's always packed. My Actually, if you want to hear something funny, my cousin... My cousin works there. He's like a bellhop, so he like you know has to clear the tables and everything. But he also has to stand outside and uh, dress like the armadillo like once a week. <laughs> get, get people to come to Texas Roadhouse. I mean, that's the kind of shit they make people do when you have a job like that. It's like you put on the armadillo costume, go outside and get some kids in here, food, some food. Mm -hmm. it's like people, it's a restaurant. They know it's here. They're not. You're not going to get someone who's going home from work. See me in the armadillo suit. Like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna get some French fries first. It's not gonna happen. Like I don't understand the appeal. I have no desire to go to Texas Roadhouse, but now that I know that they have a fucking guy dressing up like an armadillo to greet people, I might go there now. That's awesome. <laughs> yes. it's, like, it's Chuck E. Cheese for rednecks. That's fucking great. It's great, and you know it, it, it reminds me because I, I let, let's talk about this for just a, just a minute. Um, I'm driving yesterday, and uh, <laughs> thanks for that. And uh, I had to do it. I don't know what that was. What was that? Uh, PJ took a nap on my couch, so I drew the dick in his mouth, like, and it was just on, on the picture, but not on his face. Though. Yeah, no, that's so 1999, Lou. I have an app now. No, I get you killed in Troy. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> yeah, you have an app now. Was like the dick pic app. It's like put a dick on your grandma. Put a dick on the oh. anybody. Holy shit! If Big Bucket doesn't work out, Lou, you just might have fucking came up with the best back app ever. People would yeah. pay 99 cents to just have a dick automatically accessible. Like, you can take a picture of somebody and just put a dick in their ear, their eye, their... Lou, you're a genius. It's called Snapchat, and it already exists. And you can just draw the dick, or... Actually have no, pictures. but this, this way here, like, I want the curved dick on some pics, I want the meaty, girthy, short one on other pics. Your app changes America. I hope so. <laughs> well, there's like there's like 16 different dicks to choose from. Yes, <laughs> over 16 dicks and any right. color you like: yellow dicks, green dicks, purple dicks. Especially for four ninety nine a month, you'll get Dick Drawer Plus, <laughs> which will include eight exclusive dicks never before seen in the United States of America. We're on Jeremy's dick, dicks of famous people, John Hamilton's dick. <laughs> but hold anyway, on a so second. Well, no, people I was going to talk about like all the uh, what I want to say is like the armadillo thing reminded me. So I, I was driving to a uh, smoke shop yesterday, um, yeah, through through Patrick, not Patrick Shirley, and it's like Liberty Tax. I'm sure everyone's seen. They have like a guy dressed like the Statue of Liberty in front of the store, like spinning the sign that says Liberty Tax. He's going and he's waving like he's Mickey Mouse. I mean, I understand that you want to advertise. I understand that. Um, if the guy's like a super talent, maybe like you see some of those guys on the internet where they spin the signs like crazy and they don't they don't want to drop. It's kind of cool to watch that, but I don't care what the guy's spinning the sign for. I'll stop to watch him if he's amazing, like for a second. It's not making me go in. Like, you know what? Let me get my taxes done. You know, I'm, I got errands to do, but now that I see this Statue of Liberty guy, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go, you know, go in there and you know, do my taxes or whatever the fuck it is, insurance company. I don't think that works. I mean, if you're a kid and you're, you have a, you're a kid and you're in the car with your parents and you see, like, the spokesperson for 
McDonald's if they have Ronald McDonald's outside. You might be like, let me in, let me in. No one's gonna be like, Daddy, taxes, do our taxes. No, I just don't think it's done enough. I if I went down a, a street with restaurants and places and everybody had like cool mascot thing, like that would be that would make me feel like I had to make a choice of where I needed to go. I just feel like it's like random on the street corner, like one company's doing it. But if they had like like a, a murderer's row of like ten different like mascots, like fucking the Kings out there, the Hamburglars out there, Wendy's out there. Like if I had if everybody and they were doing like they were they were throwing up like flaming sticks or doing some weird trick that I didn't know they could do. Like I would I would have to choose. I would immediately never go to any of those restaurants. If I saw like. I drove down a street, and there were every restaurant on that street. No matter what it was, like Italian bistro, pizza place, McDonald's. They all had like a special guy, like the pizza guy. Hey, I would be like, this is exactly where I'm not eating. Now I'm not eating here. I don't want. I don't care. And not only do I not care, it makes me. It, it, you, I know that you expect a person to do. Can I be there? All right, let's let's see how it sounds. Hey, record, Nate. We're recording. Are oh, you already recording? All right, cool. So, uh, you had some technical difficulties, but Kevin, you were talking. We were talking about shitholes, and then we started talking about Christmas. So, so usually for Christmas, we exchange gifts. Uh, we didn't talk before Christmas, so I didn't know if we were doing it. I don't know if you were, like, spending money on your kid now that she's, like, old enough. So I wasn't sure what was going on. So Kevin, I never know if we had that kind of arrangement, though, where we had to be like, are we doing it this year? No, I know that. I know that. But for some reason, I don't know why. I just thought, like, like for, like, weeks leading up to Christmas, you guys were pretty busy with stuff. Oh, yeah. I wasn't sure if like money was you know you have a child and yeah I, I I was there last week so I saw an like, mm, enormous amount of sweatshop made toys that she has made by children her own age probably <laughs> you know and uh, like a, like so many things Nate that they were giving they were getting rid of like a couple putting bringing them back because they're just too too much stuff and too many little pieces and parts and yeah my sister my sister was like. How did she like this? How did she like the castle that I got her? I was like, uh, there's like eight gifts that have been sitting out on the tree for like five days. Like, I'm not opening any more fucking gifts. Like my living room is just like, just bullshit for like two weeks. I'm sure you, I feel the same way, uh, Nate, with, with that shit. Uh, but, but also too, uh, my mom got Kylie this kitchen set and it came and, and we, you know, we had it for a while, and then we were put it together Christmas Eve. And truth be told, I'm more of like the Santa's little helper when it comes to like putting shit together. I got like that. the guy that's like, oh, uh, that's uh, that's that's um, that's instruction number sixteen, Kelly. So get that screwdriver out. I know <laughs> that's usually me. But she was like having like a fucking. We were both having like a mental breakdown, like looking at this thing. It was like seventy steps. I've never seen. A fucking kitchen for a little kid so sophisticated. Even Bob Beale would have been like, fuck this. He would have walked off uh, his fucking television show trying to build this goddamn thing. Hey, you want to put it together? You want to? Well, then you put it together. You put together this fucking particle board piece of fucking shit. These instructions make no sense. So we, we ended up sending it back, and they're going to give us like an Amazon credit, and we're going to buy like a, a, a like a kitchen set that, that comes in seven pieces, maybe? <laughs> No, how about this? 55 pieces would be good. <laughs> this thing was ridiculous. Like, Kelly's, like, breaking it as you're trying to, like, screw the fucking things in. Like, it was ridi- It was absolutely ridiculous. I, 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 we literally should have just built, like, got a new kitchen for our, our kitchen. Like, <laughs> installed a new fucking sink, a new, a new microwave, like, everything. It was ridiculous. So... <laughs> So, yeah, so then my mom got really mad because, like, she thought, like, I just was lazy and didn't want to put it together. Meanwhile, it's like, Mom... I, 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 I could I could contract this fucking job out to somebody over in Long Island over here if you wanted me to. But she was like, no, no, no. I didn't know I didn't know this was gonna happen. Like she was like so <coughs> and I, like we we was like, you you need to get somebody over there to put this together. Like I don't have a crew like that, Mom. 
I mean, I, I mean, I could, I could go stand outside the gas station on Monday morning and see who wants to work for me, but I'm not doing that. Like everybody else was looking at it, like, like even like Kelly's brothers are like, "Fuck this!" Like, bring this, send this shit back. Like, well, the, the people that like work in construction are telling me this. I was going to say like, have construction jobs with like coming over with a construction hat going, "Yeah, you no, know, nah, my hands are off of this. This isn't a union job, guys. I'm out." And also, when Beth, when when you had to talk to your mom. You were probably like, you, I wasn't going to put it together anyway. That was never going to happen, period. <laughs> but this is something, and I agree with you. Listen, when, for my niece, they got her like the same thing, like a toy kitchen. I just feel like if, if you want to talk about like sexism and stuff like that, it's like, hey, little girl, here's what you're going to be spending most of your adult life in front of the sink. So why don't you play with the sink as a toy? Like, think about, so think about it like this, like as a girl being a child, her toy is like, pots and pans that she pretends to clean and then pretends to put in like a dishwasher and pretends to make eggs so then when she gets older she can just like hopefully make that stuff and do those things for some man or her lesbian lover or whoever and then as a but as a kid like maybe a kid like a boy might have like an erector set to build stuff doesn't mean necessarily it's like a construction toy it's not like a, like there's a toy for boys where it's like here's your briefcase Here's a little bottle of scotch, and here's the pistol you can use to blow your brains out when you get fired from your job. It's like, look, Dad, just like you, you know, where? Like, that toy doesn't exist. So well, she guess. also got, like, the fake food toys, too, oh, I saw where it. it's like, it comes with, like, everything you could think of in a <laughs> plastic form. Like, where you're like, you're like, oh, I, I never knew that. Oh, she had, like, plastic bacon, plastic donuts, plastic eggs, plastic ketchup. But it's but I just like I remember as a kid doing that. But I, I got I gotta say I, I fat kids gotta feel real weird doing that stuff, like like opening their presents on Christmas morning and it's like and then in their head they're probably like this isn't real, <laughs> this isn't gonna this is gonna satisfy my cravings. Well, it's funny because twenty years ago my sisters got that same the same toy that you opened for Kylie last week, which was the you know it's like a glob of like corn with butter sizzling on it but you know it's all one piece you like put yeah. it in a pot like look I made cream corn wow whatever like I guess game you can play with that <laughs> <laughs> it's called cream corn yeah it's like what's it's this? just called like, cream corn like also like when I was there last week I was looking at the uh, you know it says like plastic you know hollow pink plastic hot dog buns with hot dogs that don't fit in the bun really they can go like hey, look, baby, look there you go you're having a barbecue all for yourself go in your room go, go to your room go to your room and, and try not to eat the stuff that looks exactly like real food but, you, but that's the thing when, with them like they they're used to eating the real thing so they'll they'll go up to you like with an ice cream cone and like like an asshole you're like really licking the thing like you don't it's probably been like fucking like you're sitting in a dust pile for two weeks but you're like oh vanilla and like you're talking like oh, like you're, you're just like you're like oh, I got I got I can't shatter her dreams yet. I have to be in this world of make believe, even though I know that I'm I'm licking a plastic vanilla cone. That was nice, actually. Yeah, I feel you, bro. <laughs> Dude, it's so. I, I I don't have any children, but I had you know growing up, I was the oldest. I was the only boy. So with four, and another thing is, and you only have one girl. So imagine if you had like four little girls, you, how many toys and how much of the same. So the other thing is when they're little, like when I was a kid, you know, I, I had my own set of stuff. I had like my, I got like a Dishman for Christmas Ooh. and like four or five toys and like four or five or six other like CDs or whatever, like guy stuff. But like they, if my one sister wanted a doll or a specific toy, all of them got the same exact toy. So on Christmas when I was a kid, there would be pretty much three to four identical piles of the same toy, maybe a different color. Maybe they would be like, you know, I remember the year like Dismans, when, when Dismans finally got kind of really cheap, you know, you can get like a Disman came like that one package or it's it like hanging next to the wrist, like an impulse buy. It was like $40 at the time. So there's four Dismans, purple and blue and green. Like, that see-through plastic shit that you get, like, when you're a kid. Like, like mm. it's so cool. All the kids love it. Yeah. If you were to drop this a hundred times in the next four days. My beeper looked like that. Yeah, Sorry, right. Luke. Now you're hating yourself. I'm going to have a shirtless, and I'm just going to be like, where are we going? And I'll have 
I'm pretty sure she got the room that uh, we stayed at for the wedding. Oh, is there a pool? Oh, there's a pool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's what she meant. Okay. Yeah. Nothing, nothing like a hotel pool. It just, you can smell the chlorine like through the walls. It's like, hey, you know what this pool has in it? The flu virus. So good luck, everybody. It's like, we put so many, we put a dangerous amount of chemicals in this pool just so that your skin and your eyes and your genitals will be irritated and you'll probably have to go to the hospital yeah. anyway, but you will not get the common cold. Phil sure Turnley sure. got blinded the other day. Yeah. Someone bled in the pool from their anus, so we dosed a couple couple gallons of like straight like, like chlorine and uh, some Clorox bleach. So I hope, hope you like the pool. And by the way, <clears throat> I'm going to go grab us all coffee tomorrow. Oh, yeah. You said you're going to get Death Wish. Please do that. So the one thing, I, I did write something down, and it was just very random. Um, so when I was watching, it was like a movie trailer. It was like the new Michael Bay movie. It's like something about like some soldier bullshit movie. Hey, but I like that. It said movies. rated, but it was rated PG-13. And usually when you see like rated PG-13, sometimes they'll like list the things why it's PG-13. So usually it's like adult language, adult content, nudity, uh, violence, something like that. But this one just had rated PG-13, and it just said four intense sequences of peril. <laughs> what the fuck? Like, how, how specific is that shit? Like, that's what it said on the rating system. Like, who came up with that? Have you ever seen that before? I was no. like, I was like, wait a minute. Like I'm trying to like find my like was this okay for my kid to see? Oh no, intense sequences of peril. We're not seeing this shit. We'll just pop in a ladder. We're not going out. Fuck that. <laughs> well, what is that? Well, okay, so it says a soul. What's the movie called? You know what it's called? That's or? like M13 or S13. Is that the Benghazi movie? Yeah. It's uh, some rescue bullshit movie. It's like Zero Dark Thirty it's with the- with Transformers in it because Michael Bay's directing it. I don't know. But yeah, it's 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 coming out soon. No, That's awesome. There's no. a movie about Ben. Johnson. <laughs> don't look. He's running from something. We don't know what yet because they're only in the beginning of the movie. But just don't look. <laughs> Barrel. <laughs> Those are the those are the, the the ways they have always rated the movies. See, the whole rating system is. If you watch that documentary that came out a couple of years ago, there was people who were adamantly against the rating systems because, for example, uh, they can show a zillion scenes of murder, but if there's no blood, it's PG thirteen. If there's blood, it's rated up. And they're saying how it should be vice versa. It should be like you should show the blood at PG thirteen. So like. They're not glorifying the violence. What basically what you're doing is making a PG-13 have, like, for example, they, they, the movie they used for, um, uh, for example, is like 007. It was like a Pierce Bronson. He's like l- literally shooting people in the face every 10 seconds in this one sequence. But there's just no blood. They just get killed. So when you're making a PG-13, that's allowing younger audience to see death and murder and all that kind of bullshit. So it's, you're not helping. You know, it's like they're rating it to make it so young, certain people don't see certain things. But it's almost like they're enabling younger people to see more violent stuff because they took blood out. But for example, sexuality, if it's a guy and a girl banging, it'll be rated up. If there's nothing to be seen, it's maybe PG-13. If it's girl and girl or guy and guy, it's NC-17. No violence in the movie whatsoever. It's like a boring three-hour French bullshit movie with subtitles. And at the end, two guys kiss. It's NC-17. Kids can't handle that. That's horrible. But a guy getting shot with a tank in the face, as long as there's no blood, PG-13. So, you know, and but that whole thing, like, sequences, I don't know if it's a sequence. That's like a, you know, it's kind of like a movie technical term, a sequence. And peril, obviously, is what kid even uses the word, in their vernacular, is the word peril. Father, the Transform movie is very good, but there's much too much peril for me to enjoy it. I mean, what's going on? Why is it so dramatic? Why can't it be robots in disguise, etc.? You know, it's just, like, stupid. Like, what kid's like, too much peril! They're actually creating the next... Like, you're gonna... If that 
if I I'm gonna look into when we're done recording how often that's been like used to like raid a movie like sequences of peril and that's kind of like how the brainwashing happens they start using that ter- those terms and then you start hearing parents bitching on TV on the news like there's too much peril in movies too much peril like, if, it's, if it gets to that point like is there gonna be a movie that has a lot of nudity in it where it's just gonna say like intense crushing of pussy yeah. <laughs> 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 it's gonna say, like we're like oh fuck that okay that's a little bit different than just showing yeah, ass. Exactly. There's a lot of pussy pressure right there. Or what if it's like, uh, let's try to think. Of half, let's let's create our own like new rating system. So if it's if it's intense scenes, sexual scenes, it won't say like intense sexual content. It'll say something like, it'll say there's just like a guy going like this, like this is happening a lot. <laughs> and then uh, if it's just like extreme violence, instead of it saying like like uh, uh, what's the what's the word I'm looking for? Gratuitous violence. It'll say something like um, brown people getting murdered or something. Like, you want to write the brown people? Down for the first time in like five years. And I remember when the movie came out, it came out like right after 9-11. And I remember sitting in the theater and I wasn't bought into, I didn't buy into the whole, let's go destroy the whole Middle East. Like well, pretty much everyone else in the country was. But I remember sitting in that theater and I, me and my friend watched the movie and as we left the theater, obviously it's in, you know, if you were never so Black Hawk Down, they're in Africa. And uh, they're just, whatever the military says they're doing, blah, whatever. They shoot down a Black Hawk helicopter, and then they kill, like, the wounded guys in the helicopter, and they have to go and get the guys. And that's the whole movie. It's just, you know, two days of nonstop fighting. Yeah. These, like, Nigerians with, like, AK-47s. And when we walked out of that theater, I remember I cracked a joke. I was like, everyone in that movie there hates black people right now. And... I said to him, like, that's the movie was. It was like, bad black people, the movie. And everyone, like, you know, you walk out the theater, like, everyone's that's, you know, trying to leave as quickly as possible. Everyone around was like, yeah, it like, it was literally like, less than a year after that. I, like, it, fuck this movie. I, like, inadvertently started a riot. I was like, so weird. I was like, god damn, right? We gotta go over there and get him. Like, we were living in the same country. That happened, like, ten years ago. Like, and I was like, I regret it saying. I was like, oh my god, like, people are so. I mean, I, I get it. Nine eleven, whatever. But everyone like really wants to just go to war. Did you, did you watch that movie in Montgomery, Alabama? No, I watched it in Long movie? Island in fucking Farmingdale. Which is, if, if you've lived around, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, shot a gun in the air. Yeah. Hell yeah, motherfucker! Let's go get him. He's like, uh oh, squeal like a pig. Now, to end the show, I just want to tell that. I don't know if I told that story in the last episode, but that was a great night. We were uh, hanging out in Kevin's house. And now, you've seen Kylie. He's held Kylie in front of the camera before. She's this big. You know? She's like a, a little tiny baby with like a squeaky tiny voice. But one night, again, I don't know if she was sick or she, like her, like, you know, like the, your voice gets kind of scratchy when you just wake up. We're, me and Kevin are sitting playing a card game at the, ta- that, uh, the kitchen table getting drunk. The baby's sleeping. Kelly was either in bed or, or uh, yeah, she kind of was in bed. The baby was sleeping. It was like late. It was like one in the morning. We weren't being loud. And um, the baby comes out of her room on her own. You know, she's this high. You know, she's this. She, I keep making her smaller, but she's, what is she, like 12 inches tall? And uh, she's pocket size. And we're sitting there getting drunk, and I have my back turned. And she's like, <laughs> got one hand, she's got her juice cup, and the other hand, she's like dragging her blanket, and not making one, she's like a Navy SEAL. She didn't make one itty bitty sound. And she comes around this little corner, like Kevin has an island in his, in his kitchen. So if you're in your back to it, like you, just, you can't see what's on the other side of it. And she pops her head out, like a little gremlin, out from behind this, this thing. And she just looks right, like, before she made, made eye contact with her, I heard her voice, and it scared the shit out of me. She likes looking up with this cup. She's going, juice. <laughs> <laughs> she had this like raspy, like she just woke up voice, and she wants juice. But like, all you hear is juice, juice. And you know, I'm like, you know, now I'm sitting in my back, stern. This little voice, you know, six inches off the ground, is like juice. It scared the shit out of me. I don't know what. Something was coming to the floor. Like a real life gremlin was in your house. It was fucking scary. I got scared. It scared the shit out of me. And Kevin was saying how she does it so much. She just says, she just says juice. Like a cave person. She's like, juice, juice. That Kevin and Kelly constantly do it back to her. Like, 
make fun of their own child, like Jews, to the point where this two-year-old understands that she's being fucked with. She's like, look at them, like, so is there going to be Jews, or are you just going to fuck with me? <laughs> it's good, because, like, I'll do it, I'll be in the kitchen and make them. I'll just keep saying it, and then Kelly will be in the, in the bedroom going, Jews, and I'll be like, Jews, 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 <laughs> so until I come, finally come back there with the orange juice, I'm like, Jews? So we do, I do it like 32 times as I'm on my way to the fridge. And the baby knows that it's bullshit. I'm she understands. Mocking. She knows we're mocking her, too. Yeah, she like understands. Like, guys, I get it. Like, <laughs> I mean, well, what are you... Oh, he's putting a pen back together. Yeah, that's what I've been doing for the past. I somehow broke it because I'm a fucking mongoloid. Baby's crying. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed episode two of season two. And uh, we'll talk to you guys next week. Hopefully... We'll record a show while Nate's down and we're drunk and that'll be funny. If not, we'll make something happen for you. Peace. Peace. Bye, Kev. Go Bye, and get Kev, juice. Kev. Look